Hello everybody and welcome to the War Room. This one is for the UFC 278 co-main event. This very exciting uh, middleweight clash, although I was expecting this one to be light heavyweight for Paolo Costa, given the fact that he was uh, he was a bit heavy last time around. Um, Paolo Costa against Luke Rockhold. <laughs> this is going to be lots of fun, this one is. I mean, it's kind of a, like a sit back and watch and watch this happen because it, it's going to be a train wreck one way or the other. I'm... <laughs> okay. Paolo Costa, 13-2 and two is his record. Undefeated up until his last two fights. He's lost his last two, which is important. Luke Rockhold, 16-5. and five. Uh, Had losses earlier on in his career, but never had two losses back-to-back. -back. All five of his losses are knockouts. The... <laughs> so let's have a quick look at Rockhold's record. So... If you look at if you look at where he was at, he was he was fairly active. Like 2014 was his year. Stop Philippou, triangle Tim Bosch, guillotine Michael Bisping, and then into 2015, he got that Rene choke win over Lyoto Machida, and then culminating that year with the that um that fourth round TKO over Chris Weidman that won him the belt. But then in 2016, it just started to unravel a little bit. You know, he lost the belt to Bisping. He won a, a, a fight over David Branch. Um, but then, you know, he got stopped by Yoel Romero, that shotgun to the face. And then Jan Bojovic dropped him stiff to the canvas. And if you look at the time between those fights as well, the loss to Bisping 2016, the win over Branch 2017, the loss to Romero February 2018, the loss to Bojovic July 2019. Like these losses have been spaced out and he's been living with that for a long time. I would say he's been on a bit of a downward spiral since the loss to Michael Bisping because that probably still haunts him to this day. I, I, you know, I mean... I know obviously they're friends now and everything, but it, Bisping's never going to let him forget the fact that he knocked him out and took his belt off him. It, it's just, you know, it's just the nature of their relationship. They've both got very um, abrasive personalities in that way. The other thing as well, you've got to bear in mind. So Paolo Costa was undefeated up until the point when he lost to Israel Adesanya. So he lost to Adesanya in September of 2022, and then he took what, 13 months out and then came back against uh, Marvin Vittori and fought over five rounds in October of 2021. And just, he just didn't look great. You know, he came into fight week, what, 25 pounds overweight, I think it was. They moved the they moved it to a catch weight. Then it ended up being a light heavyweight bout and Marvin Vittori was, well, well you know, right in my balls or whatever Vittori would say to that. You know, he, he don't care. He'll fight you at whatever weight class you want to want to show up at. The fact that Vittori kind of showed up like not bothered and, you know, of course, he, you know, he always shows up looking in great shape, but physically being in shape is a different thing for a fight. And showing up that overweight shows that to me that he'd not, he'd not prepared the way that he would normally. You know, I think he felt like he was going to just be too much for Marvin Vittori technically, but Vittori's that hard-nosed skills everywhere, the brown belt on the mat that you don't want to roll with because he's going to sub black belts all day. You know, just a just a nightmare of a fight, and Costa for all the gamesmanship and the the, the talking that he was doing, like, that was a a really really bad fight for him. Yeah, and 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 I would imagine that this the the the, the, the psychological positions of both of these individuals coming into this fight is very precarious, <laughs> which is interesting on another layer layer because I don't think there are two fighters in the UFC that are this. <sighs> How do I say this without upsetting anybody? <laughs> they've both got very, they've both got very kind of, they're both very vain <laughs> and they've both got very big egos and they're both their own biggest fans. But that, that membership club has taken a bit of a hit recently and they're both feeling it. You know, Paolo Costa has got to get a win here because he's going to be on a three fight losing streak. Luke Rockhold can't get knocked out again and not to Paolo Costa. Imagine the pressure that's going into this one. Honestly, like I, I, I look at this fight and I, I can't even research it without giggling. I'm so excited about it. Because there's, there's, just, there's, there's so much going on in this that's not anything to do with mixed martial arts. There's so much going on about self-perspective, about how, how does Paolo Costa feel about himself right now after getting grilled by Marvin Vittori for five rounds? Or 
being completely outclassed by Adesanya. Like you can you can imagine the tumbling down of this this uh, this self belief that would be very difficult to recover. On the other side, you've got Luke Rockhold, who's who's must have been trying to hold this this you know confident front together now for a good while. They're both very awkward. They're both very kind of uncomfortable in their own skin, even though they're very physically well conditioned and good looking dudes. Like they're kind of mirrors of one another in weird in a weird way. But they're both also in this very interesting situation. They're in the co main event. There's lots of it, lots of attention on them. But neither neither of them have got a very strong foothold on their career right now. And I know how that feels. I've been there. And it is a weird place to be. Because you lose one fight and you're going to pick it up the next time. Then you get knocked out in the next one. Then you're going to pick it up the next time around. Then they put you against a giant. And all of a sudden it starts to feel like it's all coming down. I know what it feels like. And and the, the easiest thing to do is to think about throwing kicks and punches. The hardest thing to do is to believe that it's going to amount to anything. <laughs> and the psychological stance of these two coming into this... I can't even begin to imagine. Okay, have I talked about Taylor the Tape? Paolo Costa six foot one. Luke Rockhold is uh, six foot three. So Luke Rockhold has got a two inch height advantage. Paolo Costa has got a seventy two inch reach compared to Luke Rockhold, who's got a seventy seven inch reach. A five inch reach advantage. Taller, rangier. Now Luke Rockhold is is a is a bigger, stronger version of the kind of range that he fought against um, against Adesanya. He's also a very skilled southpaw striker with a couple of really good weapons, one of them being his left leg, left body kick, left head kick all day. What we see from Paolo Costa is that he likes to close people down into boxing range where he can start swarming with volumes of punches because he's not clubbing people. That must have been loud. Sorry for headphones. Was that all right? You're gonna... he, he's, not, <laughs> he's not clubbing people with one shot and they're going down. He's He's wearing them down with a volume of strikes. So you get to the point where the referee's like, nah, enough, enough. Or they're on the floor and he's just pouring in and the person's not not uh, not moving. So if Luke Rockhold does get caught with shots, it might not just be the end of the fight. I mean, <laughs> to borrow a term from a good friend of mine, this is a bit of a battle of glass cannons. Because they're both very dangerous, but they could both shatter in a moment. Like Luke Rockhold's got a wicked left leg. He's also got a, a, a really good jab um, and, and a decent right hook if he has the confidence to use them. Paolo Costa's very good at aggressively swarming and keeping his foot on the pressure. But where's his confidence at? Because confidence is, is a lot of the fuel that forces him into that range and makes him be very aggressive. Both of them are on shaky terms when it comes to that. I think what's going to happen in this one is that Rockhold's going to come out and show his grappling skills. Because he's always had good grappling skills. If we look at their records, let's have a quick look at this. So Rockhold's got uh, 16 wins on his record, 6 by uh, stoppage and 8 by submission. But like I said, he's he's never lost by decision. Whenever he's lost, he's been stopped by, by strikes. On the other side, you've got Paolo Costa, who's got 11 wins by, by TKO, 1 win by submission, 1, uh, one loss by, by stoppage. I don't think I don't think I'd, um, I don't think Paolo Costa is going to be quite as concerned about the power coming his way. It's different when you've been when you've been clipped and caught, and he wasn't he wasn't knocked out cold by Adesanya. Not the way that Rockhold was knocked out cold by uh, Rockhold by um, Bajavich and by by Yoel Romero. Well, I mean that was that was rough to watch. That was they 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 last like they leave a bad taste in your mouth, and and. It might just be the the confidence and aggression of Paolo Costa, if he can muster it or if he can fake it till he makes it, to come swarming forward to Rockhold and get Rockhold backing up and freaking out. Because we, we've talked about this with uh, uh, with Dustin Poirier. For whatever reason, in the first sort of 60 to 90 seconds of the fight, he's a little bit tense. He's not quite settled in yet. And I'm not saying this is still the, still the case, but it certainly was for a good period of his career. He was a little bit tense and he was a little bit more susceptible to getting caught and dropped. Because when your body is tense, you know, that does happen. It's the drunk driver analogy, unfortunately. Like the drunk driver doesn't usually get the same kind of injuries as the people that they that they they crash into. Like it's the people that are tense and they're oh, they brace. That's where the damage comes. If you're relaxed and if you're calm, you can take those shots better. In that opening round, when especially when, you know, when Rockhold's been out for, for a good period of time. 
all of a sudden, if Paolo Costa's like three rounds, I'm going to put my foot on the gas. I'm not going on the three fight losing streak. And he swarms Rockhold. I could see Rockhold either bringing his chin up in the air and being a little bit stiff and getting pinged. Glass cannon goes down or level changing and taking Costa to the floor where he then might be able to start working that jujitsu game because I definitely feel like Rockhold's got an advantage there. Um, like you look at the submissions on his record. I mean, that you know, the, the one arm guillotine against Bisping was impressive. Bisping is incredibly tough, very difficult to put away. And you can imagine how much Bisping wanted to get that win over Rockhold because they already hated each other at that point. The inverted triangle against Tim Bosch, again, a beautiful submission, really, really impressive. It, it's a it's a more likely uh, path to victory for Rockhold to put this fight on the floor and to, to, to make Paolo Costa work in ranges where he can't be dangerous, he only has to be defensive. Getting up off the floor, defending his neck, feeling pressured, taking strikes, you know, seeing the timer tick away and remembering what happened in the Marvin Vittori fight where he just felt flat and gassed and, I don't know, full of red wine or whatever. Oh, I mean, how do you predict it? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like Rockhold's got the better tools. I feel like that left leg could be really problematic for Paolo Costa, especially if you remember the Adesanya fight. He tends to drift a little bit away. And something that Vittori was doing really well was throwing a double jab, step into the outside of Costa's lead leg, which was then forcing Costa to peel off against the fence, which would make him very available for that head kick, similar to what Cheeto did to um, Dominic Cruz force them onto the head kick or force them onto the body kick you know you can break a man's soul you can wear him down with those body kicks but you can also get them to drop that arm and open up the head kick and just that glancing shot from Adesanya was able to open it up and that was that was the Adesanya power Rockhold I would say has got much more power in his in his kicks they might not be quite as quick but if he sets them up well he'll be able to land them okay Strikes lander per minute, Paolo Costa at 6.85 compared to 4.18 for Luke Rockhold. So obviously Costa's, you know, really throwing volume. Um, decent striking accuracy as well, 59%. But of course, that's because he is right on their front foot. Like he's not throwing many shots at range. He's throwing them very close range. Um, slightly higher striking defense for Luke Rockhold, uh, of course. Uh, far less strikes absorbed per minute um, as well for Luke Rockhold. But then... I don't want to sound like I'm picking on it. He's been stopped five times. So, you know, he's not he's not had to absorb those those punches because he's not been able to absorb those punches. He's been put out before he's absorbed the volume of punches that Paolo Costa can. I mean, you know, Paolo, Paolo, Paolo Costa's got thick, heavily muscled traps and neck. That's why it's going to be difficult for, for Rockhold to put him away with a punch. That's why I think if, if I was him, I would lean on my kicks or just take him down and, and, and kind of break his soul that way. Rockhold on the other side, you know, he's taking 2.43 punches per minute, which is not a lot. But of course, if he's tense, if he's nervous because he's coming off a couple of TKOs, that's going to have a greater impact on him. More takedowns uh, per 15 minutes for Rockhold marginally. 30% takedown accuracy compared to 80% takedown defense. I still think Rockhold can take him down. And I still think in a scramble, there are going to be submissions available to, to Rockhold that a lot of other middleweights wouldn't be able to jump on. Of course, a higher submission average for Rockhold as well, 1.1 per 15 minutes. I mean, it really is a coin toss. You know, who comes in in good shape? Who comes in, you know, with the right mindset? Who comes in with the with enough self-belief to, to, to apply a game plan? I've got questions about this one for days. I, 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 I know that, <laughs> that both of these two, are, they're physical specimens. They're both very, very, like, very well conditioned. They're both, I mean, you look at them and you go, yeah, these guys should be very good. But we saw the same thing with Vitor Belfort back in the day. And Vitor was an absolute assassin if he, if he showed up with the right mindset. But if he showed up with the wrong mindset, it was a different story entirely. And Vitor is always a good example of how mindset plays into it because in my, for my money, Vitor should have been able to beat everybody that he fought, but he didn't. Some people were able to wear him down and get to him. And that can happen to either of these two guys because we just don't know how they're going to show up psychologically. With the position they're at in their career, with their self-image, their, their, their perspective of, them, of themselves, where their self-esteem's at. 
who knows. But I know you're going to be watching, and I will too. I'll see you next time.